Hello, welcome to another master class in how to use Dreamweaver in conjunction with Adobe's new web animation program, Adobe Edge. Today I'm going to share with you how to build my text block using unordered list in something called Nth Child. Nth Child will talk to a list item and I create some really cool effects very simply, very painlessly in Dreamweaver to bring into my Edge, Adobe Edge documents. So let's get started. It's going to get started with a brand new file, file new. Let's save the file as Edge and Child version 1. Okay, if you look at my tutorials in the past, it always makes sense to title your document My Adobe Edge Effects. Okay, so we're going to put some words on the page and we're going to put Adobe. Actually, I lied. We're going to say think Adobe Edge.com. Okay, we're going to put this in an unordered list. So select all, come down here to your property palette, put this inside of an unordered list. Now I'm going to show you some very powerful techniques on how to make this work. We're going to select the tag, select the tag, unordered list, select the tag, and make a rule. We're going to make a rule for our unordered list. The first we want to do here, I just wanted to say UL, unordered list. So the first thing we're going to do here is go to box, change the width of this to whatever size you want your box to be. We're going to make this, let's make this 550 by 450 pixels high. We're going to put in 10 pixels of padding. We're going to make our tie face by default white because our background color is going to be black. I don't want to see the list bullets here, so I'm going to say list style be none. If I apply that, that's what I have so far. Now I also want to take this box Align it to the center of my page by going to right of line auto, left of line auto. There's my starting point. Now, depending on how you want to format your type here, you can do this in the unordered list or we can do this inside the list item. Totally up to you. So I'm going to make a generic setting for my list item first. So I'm going to basically go and type in li. So a specific unordered list, list item. So we're going to first of all make our font size be 44 pixels high. So I get that happen. Okay, then I'm going to change this to float to the left. So box float left. Okay, now if you want to put spaces between your text, we can do that by basically just going to margin space to the right. Let's make that 0.5 M spaces. So I get this happening. Okay, so I'm just setting up the texture of my unordered list and list item, list item inside the unordered list. Okay, now here's the super cool, cool part. We're gonna do something called the end child. Now, if you haven't done an end child before, you simply make a new rule go to the compound, and this is the code for it. It's simply li colon and hyphen child one. I'm going to show you some really powerful techniques here on how to make this work. Now, we can go with our default typeface, but I just want to share with you each section could be a different typeface. So as an example, I'll leave this think by default, but I want the background color to be red. Now, we're not going to see this until you either publish it to a site or you go to live view, but I'll share with you how this works. We're going to make the box dimensions. Actually, we don't have to set the box dimensions right now. I'm just going to go to live view and show you what that does. Okay, basically it puts a box around that nth child, which is n child 1. This is n child 2. Edge is and child three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a very powerful technique by using and child. Now here's a really cool production technique. First of all, I'm going to double click back in here and just put in padding of say five pixels. 
Now I can do this for each individual and child if I choose, or I can just go back to my list item and specify it here. It depends on how much flexibility. If you want to have the flexibility on each and child, we can do it that way. In this particular case, we're just going to put in five pixels of padding. Okay. Now, super production technique. Hold up the control key, duplicate that. Let's make that two, as in the second child. And I hit OK. Now, don't want this to be red. I want that to be red's opposite. So I go to my color wheel. If this red lives, then this is red's opposite. I'm going to make it a darker version of red's opposite. And hit OK. Make a change. Save a change. Then I'm going to duplicate this. Now again, the nth child is basically how it appears inside my list item. So basically the first list item, nth child 1 is think, nth child 2 is Adobe, nth child 3 is edge, nth child 4 is dot com, etc, etc, etc. This is the way I can talk to you. This is just a CSS trick. It's a very cool trick, but I can get my text to behave differently when I bring it into Adobe Edge. So let's duplicate this. Let's make that n child three. Okay. Now n child three, we're gonna make it this uh, orange color. N child four, duplicate that. We're gonna make it the opposite of the orange color. So we're gonna make this n child four and make that the opposite of color, the opposite of this. So this I thought I changed that to orange. Apparently I wasn't paying attention. So let's make this one orange. Let's make this one the opposite of that color. We can just copy the color from right here. Double click. So there's the color. We want the opposite color. So if you go to my color wheel, if this is where the color lives, then this is the color opposite. Okay, cool, cool stuff. Now, how does this help me? If I go to live view, this is what I have going on right now. Okay, now these two colors are too close to one another, so I need to correct that. I make a mistake here. Two, three, four. So this one and this one, I want to be different. So this one, I'm going to make it to be red. Two, three, four. So let's go back to live view, and this is what I have. Now, if you don't want spaces between here, if you just want to go edge to edge, the simplest way to do that, remember we set the rule for this inside the list item. So I could basically sit to the right, nothing to the right. So if I go to live view again, that's what my text looks like, and that's what we want. So I'm going to save the file, file save. Go back to or go into Edge, Adobe Edge, and file, open, open file. Now, if you looked at my tutorials before, I want to keep the integrity of the original Illustrator, I'm sorry, the original Dreamweaver document in case I want to go back and make changes to that. So I can do that very simply. So let's file save as, and let's just call this underscore. WC for working copy. It's a good habit to get into WC is for working copy. Okay. Now I decided that this think in white is going to look a lot better if I do it in black. So I'm going to go back to Adobe Dreamweaver, open up the working copy file, select the head and child, and make my type black. Now, of course, on the page, so I'm going to make that black. So if I go to live view, you'll see that this is now black. So back at the ranch, back at Edge, it's going to say you've made changes. Well, good for me. There's my changes. Now, very important step if you watch my other videos, I don't want to have my auto stopwatch on. So I'm going to turn that off. I also want to lock this container tag, which is my unordered list, in place. So I come up here to the right. Then I select all. I can't move this unless I hold on the command key Macintosh or control key Windows to deselect the top div. I'm going to put that right there. So now I want to turn my stopwatch on. 
Now, animation should happen really quickly. So I want this to happen fairly quickly, like in about 250 milliseconds. So I'm going to drag my marker. Now, for those of you in the past that have got confused with this on previous videos you might have seen on YouTube, the marker marks the keyframe. The marker marks the keyframe. So I'm going to keep my playback head here, but I'm mark this keyframe. So I'm going to take this and drag it to the top. So it's out of sight. Okay. So if I play that, it comes into place. Now, I want this to happen a little quicker than that. So I'm just going to back off my time a little bit. Right now it's set to 250. I want to set that to 200 milliseconds. I also want to change the easing command. So this is going to elastic out. So I'm going to pick uh, elastic out. Okay. Now, the rest, if you looked at my tutorials before, the rest is child's play. Make sure your playback head is at the end position. I'm going to copy, select, paste, select, paste, select, paste. If I hit command return, this is what I have going on so far. It drops down very quickly. Things should happen quickly, effectively. It's quick, quick, quick. It shouldn't take seconds to happen. It should happen in milliseconds. Okay, now I'm going to move my playback head a half second away, a quarter second away, rather. I'm going to, it's still in my clipboard. It's still copied, but I don't want to copy. I want to, or paste rather, I want to paste inverted. Command shift V, paste inverted. Now, the only change I'm going to make to this, I'm going to have this be not out, but in. He's in elastic. So now I'm going to copy that, select this, and paste it. Always make sure your playback head, always make sure your playback head is in the correct position. So this was selected a second ago. Now I'm going to select this, paste. Oh, what just happened here? I forgot about the think, didn't I? I wasn't thinking about the thunking. I meant to select this guy, my mistake. Paste, select this, paste, select this, paste. Hey, it's 11 o'clock at night, a little tired. So if you save the changes and command return, this is what I have happening. Things should just happen pop very quickly. This is the quick little ditty on how to use Dreamweaver Iconics. I can't overemphasize enough how powerful it is to use the Dreamweaver CSS before you bring it into Edge. Unfortunately, Edge is a great tool, but for creating text from scratch, it's a little tedious. If you had to basically do the same technique inside of Edge by default with your text files, you'd be here all night. I don't like to be here all night, so I'm just going to hit the space bar and leave you with this. Subscribe to my Twitter account, which is Think Adobe. Subscribe to my, or follow me on Twitter, I should say. Subscribe to my YouTube. I have master techniques to show with you guys, to share with you guys, one step at a time. I've been doing this kind of stuff for 24 years, since 1987. I'm an Adobe master. If there's a quicker, better way to do things, I want to share it with you guys. Talk to you soon. Follow me on Twitter, at Think Adobe. Think Adobe, at Think Adobe.